In this video, we continue to talk about WAN bonding. In a previous video, we talked about multi-WAN link balancing, which is to load share multiple connections across different physical links, essentially to aggregate the total capacity of all the links. However, multi-WAN doesn't aggregate bandwidth for a single connection, and this is what VPN bonding does. For VPN bonding, we build a VPN tunnel over each physical link, whether it's a mobile connection or fixed line connection. The VPN tunnel is established to a central gateway. It could be at customer's headquarter office or data center. The VPN tunnel runs in layer two mode. Then we use LACP to aggregate the layer two VPN tunnel into one logical bounding interface with the aggregated bandwidth of both physical links. Therefore, VPN bonding aggregates bandwidth for single stream connection or multiple streams of connections. So I have a HSA L2 with two SIM cards here already slot in and the box is just powered on with the default configuration and I'm now going to use the orchestrator to provision the configuration for both VPN gateway and the HSA. So I'm just going to import the device. And the first thing is we're going to configure the bonding interface and do it on the gateway. Bonding interface is point to point, so there can only be one peer for each bonding interface. So we just configure slash 30 IP address. Then configure VPN instance. Select as layer 2 VPN mode and assign to the bonding group. We go to the branch, we follow the same configuration as the topology here. Create the VLAN 10 secure VLAN and Wi-Fi. I have already configured the Wi-Fi in a global setting as a template with the SSID mapped to VLAN 10. Similarly, I have configured global firewall set as well to allow traffic to go through bounding interface. So I'm just going to assign the global firewall set and Wi-Fi configure VLAN 10 because VLAN 10 attached to the Wi-Fi. Configure bounding interface. Assign to the two VPN instance basically is to assign to the VLAN and also we bind rather we will select the path for each tunnel that means each tunnel is mapped to each SIM connection okay the one connection is there we got IP address for the SIM one get the second SIM okay second SIM connection is up to so we just apply the config and wait for the config push to finish Okay, config push is successful. So now let's verify the bonding interface status. Okay, the bonding interface is up with the two tunnel attached to it. Tap is basically layer two VPN tunnel, tap mode. Okay, at this stage, the status is still showing monitoring. That means the tunnels are still trying to establish a full bonding status. So we just wait a few more seconds for the tunnel to change. Okay, the status now changed to none. That means the bonding status is fully established between the two tunnels, between these two devices. And now we are ready for the test. Before we test the bonding speed, we test the individual SIM card speed first. And what I'll do is to force the traffic to go through the SIM card first. Just create a policy route. Traffic coming from VLAN 10 will be forced to the first SIM first. We will now check the speed for SIM 1, connect to the Wi-Fi. And just to verify, we are connecting to different links. So we'll check our IP address, and now we are going through SIM 1 IP address. 
This SIM card is from a provider who offers unlimited data plan after you pass certain quota. So that means after you pass certain quota, they will throttle your speed to be one Mac. So we're just going to run the speed test. So we really only have about one Mac because the unlimited is basically at lower speed. That's why we need bonding because the speed is so slow. Okay, that's basically one Mac, and now we're going to try another SIM card. And refresh our IP address. Okay, the IP address changed, that means we are now on a separate SIM card. And speed. But again, this SIM card has exceeded the base quota, so that means it's limited to one Mac. Okay, the upload fluctuates a little bit, it doesn't matter. So now we're going to force our traffic across the bonding interface and break out from our central gateway to measure the bonding speed. To force the traffic to the bonding interface, we just set the next hop as our bonding interface IP address at the gateway site. Okay, we refresh our IP address again. Okay, now our IP address has changed. This IP is actually our gateway IP at the headquarter end because now we are going out from the headquarter and you will appear our public IP address here. Okay, now we do speed test again. Okay, as you can see, we get very close to double of the two SIM card speed, plus a little bit overhead, slightly less than two Mac, but that's a very good sign for the bonding speed. Okay, we are getting very much close to the double of two SIM card, except the upload is a little bit lower because when we are doing the bonding speed test, we are pumping maximum traffic. And because the SIM card speed is so low, it causes severe congestion to the SIM card and it may have caused the bonding to lose its bonding status. So during the upload, we were only able to use one of the link. So which also means the bonding will work very well when it is not fully, fully congested. But when it is extremely congested, the speed, or rather the aggregate speed, may fluctuate because when both connections are fully congested, the bonding status may change. They will not be able to fully negotiate the total bandwidth of both links. But looking at this test here is still a very good result. Just wait for a few seconds, then we can do the single connection speed test. So the single connection stream, we get about 1.6, slightly less than the multi-stream, but it's still far more than a single SIM link connection. So that means the aggregation works for both single stream and multi-stream connections.